Okay, so this is part two of the Geekworm cases test. So I was very impressed with this one, the heavy duty aluminium case, uh, really kept it cool, completely silent, no active cooling at all. Uh, but these two armor cases have the same sort of design. Uh, so they're basically lifting the main heat sink away from the, all the main components, but they have a fan. So this one has one fan. I've got to be careful because it's not screwed in at the moment. And this one actually has two fans. Now they say there's going to be, I think, a revision on this to make the uh, cabling neater. I think it's going to go through the heat sink somewhere. But um, yeah, so let's see which one is best. I mean, obviously I'm going to try the single one first. Uh, so I'm going to build that up exactly the same as I did in the previous video with these using the thermal paste and also the copper plate to go on the CPU and GPU. Uh, and then on the other components, I'm going to use the thermal pads, hopefully the ones I was using before. Uh, you can see it comes with a screwdriver and some Allen keys and various things to assemble it, but I won't bother showing that because it's pretty straightforward. And I've got the test saved from the previous test on the two passive cases, so we can compare that and see how well it fares. And I've just noticed that these two new cases don't cover the uh, ethernet, which is this bit. Uh, so this was in the two passive cases, but in the two active ones, they are only covering those four components, power, CPU, RAM, and the RP1 chip. Same on both. So that's the single fan case all put together. You can see my cable is quite long. If I just show you this image which Geekworm sent me, which is how it's going to look in the final design, um, but I'm not really worried about it. It's fine, it's going to do its job. Um, but I thought I'd show it next to the official Raspberry Pi uh, adapter, which is obviously a lot smaller. Uh, I mean, meant to be super neat and is actually still very effective at cooling. And you can see the three components that it, that it covers as well. But uh, this is a much bigger, thicker case, a lot more aluminium. But uh, yeah, different, different designs for different uses, but I would expect this to cool quite a lot better. Okay, so we're well underway. You can see the CPU is maxed out in HTOP at the moment. And if we go down to the temperature, we can see that the hottest it's been is 53 degrees. And you can see the fan is running at the moment at 3,400 RPM, which is about as fast as it's been. And if we have a look, I can't even hear the fan if I get close to it. That was with the microphone very close. It is, it is a really nice quiet fan. It'd be interesting to see what the dual fans are like. Okay, so it's all finished and the maximum temperature it got to was 54 degrees on both. And the fan only ran at a maximum speed of 3,488, which is pretty much nothing and couldn't really hear it. And as you can see, the fan isn't running at the moment and it's uh, at a nice cool 42 degrees and 50 degrees. So very pleased with that. Let's try the other one. I've just started the final test with the dual fan armor case and it's just idling at the moment. So it's about 15 minutes in and the fans are spinning but very slowly. So the maximum they've been is 1483. You can see that the CPU is maxed out at the moment. But if we try that sound again, when did little fans get so quiet? Uh, I've had so many Pi 4 cases in the past with really quite noisy fans. This is uh, really impressive. Okay, so comparing to the first two cases in my first test, so this is the passive armor case, and temperature-wise, the maximum temperature it got to was what, 60.9? Yeah, 60.9, so pretty reasonable considering there's no fans involved. The heavy passive case I really liked, uh, and that got to 53.8 was the maximum. Uh, which is very impressive for passive cooling. So single fan, uh, that actually got to 54.3, I can see here. So what was the heavy passive case? Yeah, 53.8. So the actual, the single fan case actually got hotter. I mean, that makes sense because it's obviously not going to be as effective at passive cooling, but then when it gets to a certain point, the fan kicks in and then it keeps it cool. And the fan is adjustable, so you can make it more aggressive or less aggressive if you want to. But uh, yeah, that, the fan wasn't needed very much and certainly was incredibly quiet. The twin fan system actually got hotter than the single fan system. So 58.7 I can see there. And that is also 
hotter than the heavy passive case. Now, long term, you might find these start to overtake it. The, these tests were all 20 minutes and it's not particularly warm in here, probably about 16 degrees. But if you're in a hotter climate, obviously that experience can be very different and you're going to need some sort of active cooling. But uh, yeah, it's been interesting trying them out and uh, I'll also use this benchmark for some other cases in the future. But I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.